an introduction to NORMA, the data modeling tool for object role modeling. We're going to go through the process of adding some objects and relationships to a model, adding some relatively complex constraints, viewing the verbalization, and finally generating the relational tables. NORMA runs as a plug-in to Visual Studio, the basic homepage of NORMA. This is where everything happens. If you right-click the diagram area and then click on ORM Tools, you will see a list of the various tools. Some of these are already opened. There are two basic ways to build an object role model. The first is using the toolbox. Click on Toolbox. It will open up a menu of all the different kinds of elements that can appear in an ORM model. Entity type, we drag it over. We can immediately type in the name, let's say person. Different choices of reference modes, we will pick name. And so then the system will see that as being person name. Now you'll notice there's no red hash marks, so that means there's no error in our model. Okay, let's do that again. On this one, let's put in state. Give it reference mode. So we'll call this one, let's say, a code. So we've got two objects in our model so far. Now let's say I want to put in a relationship. So I can go back to my toolbox. And you'll notice here we've got choices of a unary fact type, a binary fact type, a ternary, and so on. Most of the time, you're going to use a binary fact. We'll drag and drop this out onto our model diagram. This is called a predicate, and the predicate in this case has two roles, and there must be an object type associated with each role. And you just simply drag each role to the desired object type. So we'll say the first role is going to be person, and the second role is going to be state. That says that there's a relationship between person and state. We still see some red hash marks, and that's because every relationship must have a reading. It must have a name. So we could uh, select this and open up our readings editor down here. We click on New, drop down the menu there, and it's saying, which direction do you want to name this? Because Every binary relationship can be named in each direction. So we're going to go from person to state, then type in lives in. So now the title lives in is associated with the first row box. That means person lives in state. That's how we read it. There's one more thing. There's only one constraint that is required on all relationships, and that is the one that designates uh, the multiplicity exclusivity characteristic. We right click on one of the roles and then we can say add uniqueness constraint. And that simply says that the state code is what makes this predicate unique. Now that's not very intuitive because you can't tell which is on the many side and which is on the one side, the exclusive side. There is an option that was added to Norma Fork is the appropriate symbol to represent manyness. It, by default, the forks are not displayed. But you can turn that on. Now, when you go back to your diagram, you'll see that it's showing you the many side. Okay, well, it looks like we made a mistake because this says that there can only be one person living in a state and a person can live in multiple states. We right-click that and click on Delete Constraint. Then we can go back and right-click the role with the person and add, say Add Uniqueness Constraint, and now it's the way we'd like to see it. Okay, now, uh, do we say that every person must live in a state? Let's say we wanted to do that. If that were true, what we're saying is that a person must participate in the relationship with state. So we right-click in the person role and click is mandatory. That puts the dot here. Let's now go into the verbalizer and it's going to tell us 
the meaning of what we've set up so far. It says person is an entity type. The reference scheme for person, in other words, the identifier, is person name. Okay, and it's going to be called name. Uh, the facts are person has a name and person lives in a state. State is an entity type. It has its own reference scheme. And the fact type associated with that is state has a state code and person lives in a state. And then we say each person lives in exactly one state. And it says it is possible for more than one person to live in the same state. Okay, I said that there were two basic ways of building a model. Everything that we've shown so far has been from the toolbox. The fact editor is an alternative place to put information in. And you can see that it's going to look very much like the way we read our diagram. Let's suppose I wanted to record that a person travels to a state. So we could click on person to start us and then if we want to say travels to state, notice it already recognizes the fact that we've defined state in our model. You do this one fact at a time. It got the reading from what we typed. It just remains to put in the constraints. So in this case, we're going to want to have a many-to-many -many constraint. Say, add uniqueness constraint, and it will put it across both. What that's saying is that in that relationship, we require both the person and the state to properly identify an instance of the relationship. Let's suppose we add a person owns a car. Control enter and it puts that up on my diagram. I'll move the predicate. So what's the relationship here? A person can own multiple cars, but a car ha can only have one owner. Add uniqueness constraint. That's what we want. Notice how the use of the fork gives you an immediate visual information about the nature of the relationship. That's why the fork I find so handy. At this point, let's generate the tables. Can you guess before we do that where the tables are going to be? Well, you could sit and you could look at that and you'd struggle with it, but why not let the system do it? So what we do is we right click in our diagram area again and we select extension manager check off relational view and what you see is another tab comes up on our diagram window click on that we see our relational diagram so looking at this for a moment you'll see that a person is identified by name and that there's a relationship with state code a person can be only living in one state we see person travels to state. That was many to many, so requires a composite key. And there you see person name and state code both identified with PK. Uh, car. A car can have one owner. You'll see that it designates the foreign keys as well. Every relationship arc must have a foreign keys. This is how the system can ensure that the tables are normalized because all functional dependencies are defined. Notice that state doesn't even appear here. Why doesn't state appear as its own table? Well, the reason is that you haven't defined anything else that's of interest about state. Let's suppose that uh, we associate state is governed by city. It's got a name. We have to designate the uniqueness constraint. How many cities could be the capital city for a state? Well, it's usually just one. And how many states could a city be the capital of? Well, that's usually just one. So we want to make this one to one. Now let's ask this. How many times could a person travel to a given state? Well, it turns out if you had a person and a state listed in this little table, because that's what this is, it's like a little table uh, with this composite key, 
A person can be in here multiple times and the state can be in here multiple times, but how many times could the same person be traveling to the same state? Well, it's only once, unfortunately. Could you have multiple trips to a state? Yes. And the question then becomes, how would we represent that piece of information? Well, you would have to have some attribute that would distinguish the various trips to a state. And the way we do that is we turn this travels to relationship into an object by itself. So we can uh, select the whole thing, right click on it, and the very second choice here is objectify the fact type. I'm going to move this down. This is now going to be the name of that entity, person travels to state. Well, we could be a little more descriptive than that. And so we select that, which we've already done. We come over here to the name of this objectified fact type. Notice now here it says it's an objectified fact type. We come down to name and then we can type in whatever we want here. Let's say we'll call it trip. This new object is called a trip. It's now a noun that's made up out of this many-to-many -many relationship. Now I can add another object that's related to this trip. Let's suppose we distinguished our trips by date. So we want to introduce another entity, call it date. We'll give it uh, a reference mode. Now, oh, I need a relationship, and this would be another binary relationship. I'll put that over here, connect this. Notice I'm going to connect not to one of the boxes, but to the circle that's around it, and I'll connect this to here. Okay, now what would this, what would the reading be? We select this predicate, select our readings editor, new on date. Okay, that's the reading. They could make a trip to a state multiple times. That would be on multiple dates. Let's add driver as another object because sometimes the person is a driver. You'll notice that driver doesn't have a reference mode. But let's define driver. Since driver is always a person, we can go to our toolbox and pull out the subtype connector. We drag the subtype to the supertype, and that says that a driver is a person. And notice now our error went away because it will inherit the name as the identifier of person. Now, what do our drivers do? Well, drivers operate cars. Okay, if I click driver, then operates car. And it already knows about car. So, how many cars can a driver drive? How many drivers could there be for a car? Well, I guess that's many to many. Now, let's move that much of our diagram down here. At this point, let me just load up this model with some other enhancements that I've pre-stored. Choose this one here, Intermediate ORM Model. So this is the model go having gone one step further. And let me add more. You notice we've added information about having driver's licenses and registrations for cars. We would like to add the constraint that says in order to operate a car, you must first have a license. This is what we call the subset constraint. This is the population of drivers who drive cars, where my arrow is pointing. It's, and this is the population of drivers that have a license. So what I want to do here is take the subset constraint, click where I want to put it in the diagram. In this case, this is the first one we've got, and there's only one of them, so we will double click. Then the second roll sequence we want is up here. Notice that they have to be in the subset constraint. Both of the rolls have to be from the same population, in this case, driver. What this says is that the population of drivers that drive cars has to be a subset 
And let's see if we've got this right. Click on that and go to the verbalizer and it says if some driver operates a car then that driver has a license. And that's what, that's what we want it to say. Notice that we often go to the verbalizer to validate what uh, we put into our model because it's not always easy to interpret exactly what you have in your model. Try doing that in your favorite ER-based modeling scheme. All right, let's do one more thing. We've taken all these trips, and we could have multiple trips to a state, and we differentiate those on a date. We could only take at most one trip to a state on a date. Now let's suppose we wanted to apply a rating to that trip. Was it a good trip or was it a bad trip? Now we want to objectify this trip on a date, and then we want to add the rating. So we go to the toolbox and pull down another object. I will call this rating. It will be a number. Now I want a relationship between those two. I go to my toolbox again. I'll pull out a binary fact type. Drag this up to here and drag this over to the rating. Say rating given to a trip on a date. And notice the backwards arrow here indicates that the reading is to go in the other direction. So we've got rating given to trip on a date. Now, how many ratings could you give? If I say add the uniqueness constraint, a, a given trip could have only one rating. But the same rating can be given to multiple trips. So that's what we want. One more thing that we can do is on the rating, we can define the range of possible values and in this case we might say be rating on a scale of 1 to 5. Okay so the big question at this point is where are the tables? What we do is we right click so here's the relational view. <laughs> is that what you expected? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 tables. Now obviously there's room for cleanup here to rearrange the tables. All right, that's a little cleaner. So there you have it. From here, you can go through a process of setting up a project and telling the system which target DBMS you would like to generate the DDL script for so that you can create the schema definition. But we won't do that in this demo.